the real goal is to be desirous of a partner who is equally as powerful as you are and to not want to be the more dominant, the better, the smarter, the wiser, the whatever, right? That stack of values is, is to say, the fun thing here is that I'm with somebody who in different things is better than me and in other things I'm better than them. And we've come together and said, how much ass can we kick by partnering up? So this topic of insecurities, I am seeing more and more coming up and I get asked a lot of questions about insecurities and how you handle them in relationships. Mm. And so I thought, what was who's the perfect person to bring on to really, really talk very openly about no BS, how we've actually handled and navigated our own insecurities mm. in a relationship. And where I want to start is something you actually said to me only like three weeks ago. So we're in a meeting, you said something, it upset me. On the side, I pulled you aside and said, hey, I just want to let you know what you said to me. It felt like you were invalidating me. And you turned around and in the most um, gracious way, you looked me in the eye and you, you said, but babe, I thought no one can invalidate you. That's on you. And there's so many little nuances within that of how you and when you um, or if you should allow your partner to validate you or not, and is there a fine line, and at what point can you rely on someone to make you feel good, or is that all on you? And so that's where I want to start. Talk to me about when we first got together, because people that are watching may also be single, so I like to kind of set it up for when you're first getting into a relationship, how you can handle your insecurities, um, or your partner's insecurities, and then further we'll keep going in once you get deep into the relationship and make it long lasting. That's a big topic. Uh, the reality is that, especially when you're single and you're just starting out, you really do have to have the growth mindset. And what set me free to deal with my insecurities was recognizing that I could get better. And the only thing that I think makes people really run from their insecurities is when it's something they don't think they can do anything about, which is why looks is far more terrifying than a lot of other things, especially for women. So having a growth mindset allowed me to address the things that I felt that I could change, which are, I won't say the sum total of my insecurities, but are the certainly the vast majority of my insecurities. And that is very freeing. And I would say that's where most people need to start. There's so much low hanging fruit when it comes to insecurities around things that you can change um, that I think people really need to start there. And you know, going back to what you were saying about you know, so much nuance and when you've been in a relationship as long as we have, we've gotten to the point where we can say things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise be able to say because you have so much history of investment into the other person, of wanting to lift them up, of them knowing you want good things for them. Um, that you can say something like that. But one of the things that just undergirds all this is I know you have a growth mindset. Um, and so when you say something like that and you know the other person is, isn't going to break under the weight of that comment, they're, they're going to be reminded of a shared value system. Um, and, and we probably will have to talk about that. Like when you really think about what makes a couple powerful, it's the way that you shape each other's value system. And if you do it in a way that is uplifting, um, you get inoculated from a lot of the suffering that comes with insecurity. Um, that's great, but I'm actually going to push you a bit because when we Please. first got together, we didn't have growth mindsets. And so I'm assuming people are in a situation right now where they have insecurities, it is affecting their relationship. So how do they identify some insecurity they have to work on? Um, and then how do they communicate with their partner? Now, when me and you first got together, neither of us has growth mindsets. And I seem to remember you, us playing pool one day. We first got together, we were still dating. It was your first time in England. We were playing pool together. It was competition. I wanted to win, you wanted to win. I thought it would be super sexy for me to come and whisper something in your ear. Right. Take it from there. And it was super sexy. That's the most heartbreaking part of the story is at the time, I believed that if I wasn't better than you at everything, that you wouldn't find me attractive. And that meant that I needed to beat you in pool. Otherwise, you were going to be like, ha ha, like, you know, this loser, I can beat him in pool. 
And I mean, it sounds so dumb now, but at the time it really felt like if I didn't win that that would reflect poorly on me in your eyes. I wasn't even worried about myself. Like at the time I wasn't very competitive. I didn't really care. Um, but I was very worried about what that would make you think about me. But that is an insecurity though, A hundred percent. Oh, no, no, no. Th that's not me saying this isn't an insecurity. One thousand percent. Not only was it dumb, but it was, it made me insecure. Now this is, if that really was my first trip to England, at that point I haven't even told you that I love you yet. Mm -hmm. So this is very early in the relationship. So much instability. Um, so anyway, we're playing pool. You whisper this thing in my ear. It's incredibly sexy, but it makes me miss on the game winning shot. And then you end up winning. And I got mad about it. And looking back now, of course, it's like I had finally had the realization once I had adopted a growth mindset, one, that if I wanted to get better at something that I could. So if I wanted to beat you at pool every time I only needed to practice pool, um, and this gets into sort of complications that go beyond just pure insecurity. But the realization that I had on this particular issue was who in the world would want to be in a relationship with somebody who's better than them at everything. And that was very freeing to realize that, you know, in some ways our story is a story about intertwining. But in that moment, it, it was realizing that you were your own person with your own hopes and dreams, your own desire to be great at certain things, to bring equal weight and prowess to the relationship. But I couldn't see that at the time, right? I mean, just it, it is literally just being young and dumb. Mm. But that one in particular, is very important that people understand that the real goal is to be desirous of a partner who is equally as powerful as you are. And to not want to be the more dominant, the better, the smarter, the wiser, the whatever, right, that stack of values is, is to say, the fun thing here is that I'm with somebody who, in different things, is better than me, and in other things, I'm better than them, and we've come together and said, how much ass can we kick by partnering up? Yeah. Talk to me, though, about how you started to um, change your identity to not want to have to be better than everything, everyone. So, because I think there's two elements here. There's how you deal with your own insecurities in a relationship and then how you deal with your partner's insecurities in a relationship. Yeah. So I want to start with your own insecurities and then we can talk about how you handled me being insecure in a relationship and then I can kind of give my perspective on that. Ooh, that gets complicated. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the way that I dealt with my own secure insecurities was almost entirely two things. One, a growth mindset. So I'm not good at this yet, but I can get good at this. So I, you know, the famous quote, I forget who said it, but um, there's two things you should never worry about. The things you can't change and the things you can. Because if you can't change it, then what's the point in worrying about it? And if you can change it, then just go do something about it. And that was... Um, hugely liberating because you get to the point where you go, I know I could get better at this thing, but I'm actually not interested. It will take too much time and energy. Okay, cool. Then just don't value yourself for that thing. And that's a key part of this. What do you value yourself for? We all need to feel good about ourselves. You're going to feel good about yourself based on what you choose to value. Most people confuse what they have chosen to value mm -hmm. with what is objectively valuable. Mm. So they think, oh, I value this thing because in the real world, it just simply is valuable. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily true. Um, so money is a great example. So people often value money because they think that people with money are, um, they're better in some way. And so they confuse money with worth. So that becomes the first thing that people have to untangle is, oh, I've chosen to value this thing. And because I am either good or not good at this thing, I feel better or worse about myself. That's the first thing you have to get control of. And that's, sorry, just to add to, because it's so freaking powerful. You're absolutely right. And I think women, speaking for myself, did that with beauty. And you said it earlier. And because I was teased for my looks, I obviously felt very um, unworthy. Um, and for women, you only just freaking get older. Like there's no going younger. So if youth is valued every single day, you're getting by definition, at least how I used to think, less valuable, which is why I think it's so freaking powerful that you said you have to figure out about how where you put your value and your worth compared to what is traditional